what is up everybody welcome back to another video as you guys can see by the title i'm going to be doing the 2019 exam one question so i'm just going to be working it out um i took this physics class over the summer and i got a b in the class and i worked out uh, most of the old exams so i'm just going to be going through them as quick as possible explaining steps along the way um leave a like on the video if you're new um subscribe to the channel and let's get started so the first question is um an object with mass m moves along the x-axis it is observed to have a velocity in the plus x direction with magnitude c1 t squared where c1 is a positive known constant and the time is in seconds at t equals one second it is observed to be at the point x equals d um, when, what, when does the object reach x equals 2d? So we're trying to find the time for when it reaches 2d. So let's start off with writing down what they gave us. Um, they gave us the velocity is c1t squared. So let's start off with that. v of t is equal to c1t squared. And we know acceleration is the derivative of that. So let's just write the acceleration down quickly, which is 2 c one 2c1t, 2c1t. So now let's proceed to write the position, which is gonna be the integral of c1t squared, which is c1t cubed over three plus x naught. So we're trying to find what x naught is, since that is a constant, and we can use what they gave us at x t equals one that is equal to d so let's set t equal to let's set t equal to one so x of one is equal to c1 cubed over actually c1 no it's just c1 it's just c1 c1 is one cubed one cubed is one so it's just c1 over three c1 over three um plus x naught is equal to d because that's what the x is equal to is equal to d so now we know now we know x naught is equal to d minus c1 over 3. x naught is equal to d minus c1 over 3. so now we can put that into the x of t formula so x of t is equal to c1 t cubed over 3 plus d minus c1 over 3. Okay, so now that is the equation we have for the x of t, and we're trying to find 2d. So we got to set all this equal to 2d. So 2d is equal to c1 t star, t star, because that, that's what we're trying to find, cubed over 3 plus d minus c1 over three. Okay, so now let's go subtract the D. That's gonna be D plus C1 cubed. D plus, oh, D plus C1 over three. Subtract the D, that's gonna be D plus C1 over three. And then multiply, multiply both sides by three and divide by C1 and cube root it and cube root it so that should be the final answer but to simplify to simplify in the way that they got it in the answer key um, we can just simplify it so distribute the 3 which is going to be equal to 3 D plus C1 over C1 and that's the same thing as cubed, so it's supposed to be that. And if you want to simplify it to get the answer that they want, this is the same thing as 3D over C1 plus C1 over C1, one third, which is then equal to 3D over C1 plus one, plus one. And that is all to the one cubed. Or that is, yeah, or if you can't see that, it's all that to the cube root. And that is the answer for number one. That's the answer for number one. Okay, so now, okay, so now we're gonna be doing number two 
for the 2019 exam one. Um, this one seems like it's gonna be fairly quick and easy. Um, so they gave us in a video game, an object is to be shot from the origin with the velocity of unknown magnitude W at the angle theta as shown below. The motion takes place on a horizontal surface and the acceleration is given to be C1T in the I direction and C2T in the J direction. Where C1 and C2 are given constants and T is the time of T equals zero being the time when the object is shot. If theta is known, obtain the set of equations that could be used to solve for W in order to for the object to hit the X axis at the point L as shown. So we're gonna have to be doing, um, this one is two dimensional motion. So we're gonna have to find formula in the X direction and the formula in the Y direction. So we're gonna start off with the X direction. So on the X direction, um, this one is gonna be quick and easy. Um, they gave us the X direction acceleration, which is C1T. So AT is equal to C1, AT is equal to C1T. Okay, I don't think this marker shows, let me get a different one. AT is equal to C1T, and to find the velocity of that, all you have to do is integrate, which is equal to one all over two C1T squared plus V naught, and the V naught they said it's shot at an initial, yeah, the velocity of unknown magnitude W. That's the initial, that's the initial um, velocity with the velocity of unknown magnitude W. So we're trying to find the X direction. So that's gonna be cosine theta. And since it's downwards, the positive X direction is to the, le to the right, but the thing is being shot downwards to the left. So this is gonna be negative. So it's not gonna be plus, it's gonna be negative W cosine theta, negative W cosine theta. And this is the V naught. That's the initial velocity in the X direction. So next we're gonna find the X of T. X of T, you take the integral again. So that is gonna be T cubed one all over six. C one T cubed, and then minus W cosine theta T plus X naught, and it is shot from the origin, which means X naught is zero. So the X naught is zero, so there's no X naught, and this is the final equation. I think that's the first equation they got. That's the first equation they got. Okay, now off to the next one. Um, let's do the Y direction. Let's do Y direction. Okay, so A of T, a of t in the y direction is gonna be c two t and v of t is gonna be the integral of that, which is gonna be c two t cubed one all over two plus v naught. So it's going in the negative direction again. So this is gonna be negative w sine theta. And then you take the integral again, x of t, is equal to one over six C two T cubed minus W sine theta T and the X naught is zero because it starts from the origin. And that is the second equation I think they have and that should be the answer you get. And that could help you solve for L. If you want to solve for L, all you have to do is just plug in L into, set this equal to L. Set this equal, yeah, set this equal to L and you'll be able to solve for W because everything else is, you'll be able to solve for W because everything else is given. <sighs> okay, um, number three, number three, exam one, 2019. Um, so this one is, um, I think it's a free body diagram one. Yeah, it's a free body diagram one. So... Okay, I'm trying to find the acceleration of the blocks, okay? So we're gonna have to start off with this one, drawing the free body diagrams of block one and block two. So let's just get started. Okay, okay let's get started. Um, the, X, the free body diagram of block one. So let's draw block one over here. This is gonna be block one. Block one. So we have obviously the normal force normal force of one, and then we have 
m1g, which is the gravity force, and then we have um, the p, the p force, and let's just draw that theta. We got the p force, and then I think we have tension. Yeah, we have tension force over here. So we have the force of tension. I think that is all the forces for block one. And let's write our coordinate system. We're gonna be using this way as the coordinate system for this side. And for block two, um, block two, we just have M2G, and then we have tension. Then we have tension force. Yeah, the same tension force. We're using the same T because it's a massless, unstretchable rope. So this T and this T are equal to each other. And for this one, we're gonna set the coordinate system. This is gonna be Y. That's gonna be our positive Y downwards. And this one is Y upwards X to the right because we're moving down, we're moving this way since the block is being pushed, okay? So we're trying to find the acceleration of the block. So we're gonna have to do, find the forces in the X direction and forces in the Y direction. So let's start off with, where are we gonna put it? Okay, let's put it right here. F of X is equal to MAX. FY is equal to MAY. And the acceleration of block one X is equal to the acceleration of two Y. So we're just gonna name it all we're just gonna name it all A, since they're all equal to each other, because they're all moving together by one string. So now let's write the, the forces in the X direction um, for the block one. So we have P cosine theta, since we're moving that way, P cosine theta plus T, and what else do we have? The coefficient between the block and oh yeah, we also forgot this force right here. We forgot the friction force, which is mu n. So let's write our formula. P cosine theta plus T minus mu n is equal to m1 a. So I think that's the formula. Yes, okay. Now we're gonna move on to the y direction. So for this one, we have, um, oh, we're trying to find the acceleration of the blocks, okay. So for this one, we have P sine theta, P sine theta, which is gonna be that way, it's positive. P sine theta Oh, okay, um, P sine theta, oh yeah, it's going downward, so the P sine theta is gonna be negative P sine theta minus M1G plus N1 is equal to zero, okay? So now we can know what N1 is. We're gonna know N1, N1 is equal to P sine theta plus M1G. So that is N1. We know what N1 is. Okay, um, and now for block two, this is just gonna be T minus M2G. T minus M2G is equal to M2A. T minus M2G is equal to M2A. So now we have all our formulas and now we can find the acceleration of the blocks. So we're going to have to combine so we're gonna combine this one and this one right there. So we can get rid of the, we can get rid of the, let me see. Oh yeah, it's, oh yeah, it's T. Oh yeah, it's M2G minus T. My bad, my bad. Um, M2G minus T. And the reason, because the reason is because we already set our coordinate system for positive to be downwards. So M2G is positive and T is negative. So it's gonna be M2G minus T. If you put your coordinate system the opposite way, then it would be right. But this is right here. Okay, M2G minus T. We're gonna combine those two so we can get rid of the T's. 
So when you combine it, the T's cancel out. It's going to be P cosine theta. Okay, T's are gone. Plus M to G. And then minus mu N. Minus mu N. Okay, minus mu N is equal to M1 plus M2A. M1 plus M2 a okay now that is the formula right there and um we already know what n is this n is the same as this n so we're going to replace that in our final answer um so now we're just trying to solve for this right here we're trying to solve for that right there a so all we have to do is divide and substitute so the final answer is going to be a is equal to P cosine theta plus M two G minus mu N is P sine theta P sine theta plus M one G over M one plus M two and that should be the final answer. Let me see. Um, P cosine theta plus M2G minus mu M1G plus P sine theta over M1 plus M2. Yeah, it's the same answer. And you can put A of X if you want, but it's the same, same result, same answer, same points. And that's it for number three. That's it for number three. Okay, number four, exam one, 2019. Yeah, this one's a tough one. Okay, so this one, um, a block of mass M1 is on top of a block of mass M2. Coefficient of friction is mu, and the surface, they move on a frictionless. T equals zero, horizontal force of magnitude BT is applied to the upper block, where is a positive constant. Assuming they move together, find every force acting on each block in terms of what's given, and find what time the upper block will begin to slip so that the two blocks will no longer move together. So this is two parts right here, part A and B. Um, so let's start with part A. I think this one should be easier. Um, so we're going to have to start off with drawing the free body diagrams, but let me draw the blocks real quick. So this is what they gave us, block one and block two, and there's a force beta t okay so that's the main that's the main gist of it and it's on positive x positive x going that way okay so now let's draw the free body diagram block one block one okay block one we got that beta t force got that beta t force and then we have m1g the gravity is always there m1g and then we have N1, we have N1 right there. Okay, we have N1. Okay, uh, I don't think you can see that. Let me see, can y'all see that? Uh, let me just, here it is. Let me make it, let me make it closer. <clears throat> okay, so this is gonna be block one. It has M1G, has beta T, has N1, okay, it has N1, and it has friction force, cause, yeah, it has friction force, cause it says between the blocks is mu, so since it's pushing that way, the static friction force is gonna have to stop it from moving, so it's gonna be pushing that way, and that's all of it for block one, and our coordinate system for this is gonna be this, I think it's gonna be, yeah, that's the coordinate system for both of them, that's the coordinates for both of them, and now for block two, we're going to do the same thing. Block two, we have M to G. Then we have opposite direction, force of friction. And then we have the normal force of one coming down on it. And then you have the normal force of two and two right there. Yeah, you have normal force of two. Then um, I think that should be it. Actually, wait. There's, yeah, that should be it. Okay, yep, that's it. So, yep, so that's it right there. 
Now we're going to find the force acting on each block. All we have to do is find the forces in the x, forces in the y, set them equal to each other. So for this one, um, we know it's not moving in the y direction. So n1 minus m1g is equal to 0. So we know n1 is equal to m1g. So that's one equation. Now we know this one, n2 minus m 2g minus n1 is equal to 0 because it's not moving in the y direction. So n2 is equal to m2g plus n1, which is plus m1g, plus m1g. And to simplify, you can do n2 is equal to m1 plus m2g. N2 is equal to M1 plus M2G, and that is N2 right there. And I think that is the first two equations on the answer sheet. Yeah, that is the first two equations on the answer sheet. So next, um, we're going to have to, yeah, the next force we got to find is the force of friction, the friction force. And this one, you can find it, let me see. Yeah, this one, yeah, this one's going to be, it's going to be a lot of work to find this one to get the same answer as they did. Uh, it was a lot of work, but um, let's go ahead and continue. So over here, let's finish. Beta T minus F FR. Beta T minus F FR is equal to M1 AX. M1 AX. And that's the forces in the X direction. And this one is just going to be F FR is equal to M2 AX. F, F, R is equal to M2, A, X for the block two. Okay, so now we're just going to have to set the accelerations equal to each other. So let's do A of X is equal to F, F, R over M2. So that's the first one. Okay, and now for this A of X, a of x is equal to beta t minus f fr over m1. Okay, so those are the two that we have right there. Okay, so that's the two equations we have. Now we're going to set them equal to each other. Um, to simplify this, let's do, uh, what if you multiply, multiply both sides by m2. Multiply both sides by M2. So it's going to be F, F, R over M2 is equal to beta T minus F, F, R over M1. Now multiply both sides by M2. So this is going to be F, F, R is equal to M2 over M1. And then you have beta T minus F, FR. Okay, you have that right there. Beta T minus F, FR. And then you can distribute it. You can distribute the... Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's for the whole thing. Yeah, it's for the whole thing. So now you can distribute... Yeah, this one takes a lot of work. So M2 over M1 beta T minus F F R M2 over M1. Okay? So after that, okay. So after that, um, and this is equal to F F R. This is equal to F fr so i'm just trying to simplify it to get what they got also okay m okay 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 m2 over m1 beta t minus m2 over m1 ffr is equal to okay and this right here ffr you can put m1 over m1 because m1 over m1 is one so you can simplify that just put that there and you can add Okay, yeah, yeah, this is how, yeah, this is how it goes. Okay, so you can add the plus M2 over M1 FFR 
and that's going to get rid of that when you add it. So that's going to be M1 plus M2, yeah, M1 plus M2 FFR. Okay, do I have space to write this somewhere? Um, do I even have space? This area right here. Okay, I have space over here. So I'm gonna continue it over here. Um, so this is gonna be M1 plus M2 over M1. F, F, R is equal to M2 over M1 beta T, okay? So now we're just trying to find FFR so all you have to do is multiply by M1 divided by M1 plus two. So now we have a space right here, okay. F, FR is equal to times M1. The M1s are gonna cancel out. So it's gonna be beta, yeah, it's gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be M2, it's so only gonna be left, M2 over M1 plus M2 and then you're gonna have beta t, and that should equal your FFR. That should equal your FFR. Let me see what they got in the answer. Okay, um, M2 over M1 plus M2 beta t. Yeah, that's what they got in the answer key, and I'm just gonna erase this, and we'll get to solve. I'm gonna erase half of it. We're gonna get to solve the time. Okay, so now since I erased this half of the board, we're gonna go to solve part B. What time will the, what time will the upper block begin to slip so they no longer move together? So this one, um, we're just gonna solve for T and we're just gonna change the FFR to mu N. And you already know what N is, so all you have to do is just, let's go and do it. So FFR replace it with mu N, which is gonna be mu, it's gonna be mu, M1G is equal to M2 over M1 plus M2 beta T star. That's the time that is gonna slip. So we're trying to solve for T star. So multiply, multiply both sides by M1 plus M2 over M2 times mu M1 G divided by B, and that should equal T star. And if you wanna get what the answer, if you wanna get what the answer key got, this is the same thing as M1 plus M2 over M2 times mu M1 G over B. And that's the same answer that they got. And that is it for part B. But I think that's it for exam one 2019. And I'll see y'all in the next exam two 2019, which is gonna be in the description and also in the playlist link in the description down below. Thank you guys for watching.